Welcome everyone to Something More. My guest today had a front row seat to one of the most incredible miracles that I have personally ever heard of. A young boy, dead for over an hour, was resurrected. Wow, yes. My guest is Jason Noble. Jason, wow, thank you. It's amazing, thank you so much, <laughs> Anna. God bless you. Oh, I, I, every miracle. It's yes. amazing. Every miracle no is incredible. I mean, that's why we call them miracles, exactly. right? That you can't grade them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? But I was just like, whoa, whoa. It, define for us, what do you say a miracle is? A miracle is God doing only something that He can do. Can't so, be explained. Can't be explained. We can't understand it. There's no, there's no um, equation to it. Mm. It's God showing up and doing what only He can do. I like what you say, showing up and showing off. Showing up and showing <laughs> off. Yeah, because it's a sign to point people to Him, you yeah. know, to make them wonder about yes. who God is. Yeah, science can't explain no. it. The medical community can't explain they it. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's been what's so incredible with this story. There's 301 pages of medical documents. Uh, that, on, this, on this one story. That promotes wow. that it is a miracle. I okay, mean, let's start here. Yeah. You are a brand new pastor at this church, been yes. there only a few months. Yeah. Yep. And didn't even know many of the church members. Hadn't met John yet. Yeah, you hadn't met the, the young boy that right. we're about to talk about. And one morning you get a phone call. Get a phone call that John Smith had went under the ice. He'd been under, um, and we didn't know all the particulars at this point, other than he was under the ice. And so I kind of just waited and said, okay, you know, now we'll see how this get, plays oh, out. Where was he and how did this happen? So it was in St. Louis, Missouri, mm -hmm. and they were just being boys out on the ice. And St. Louis, they don't, we don't normally get a ton of ice. I mean, mm -hmm. so, and it had been like 20 and 30 for, a, for five or six days, mm -hmm. and the temperatures went up to 70 degrees, so the ice started to melt. And, you know, people asked me, well, what was he doing? Out on the ice, I go. He's a 14-year-old boy. There's They're no doing answer. what 14-year-old yeah, exactly. boys do. <laughs> like, why were you out there? They, they yeah. didn't know. So he had been on the ice. He fell through. Three, two of his friends fell through. Um, the two friends self-rescued, and John went under. And so went under for 15 minutes. They mm. found him right at the moment that search and rescue divers were going in, um, really to be, to be a recovery at that point. And right at that moment, they found him. They pulled him out dead. I mean, basically had icicles hanging over his body. They took him to the emergency room. And they worked on him for another 45 minutes. So wow. by the time an hour and eight minutes had passed with no pulse, no oxygen, they called Joyce Smith, his mom, into the room. And at that very moment, Joyce walked into his, into his room and she didn't wait. She walked in and she prayed, Holy Spirit, bring my son back to life. And they said that when Joyce walked in the room, the temperature actually changed. There was 30. Like they could tangibly they could feel tell. a temperature change. There was yeah. 30 medical professionals that were mm -hmm. in the room. Um, they had done CPR for 45 minutes, I mean, which is unheard of. That doesn't mm -hmm. happen. And so they said that when Joyce walked up and grabbed his feet and prayed, Holy Spirit, bring my son back to life, literally the power of God went up his body and it knocked one of the nurses back. And at that moment, not an hour later, not three hours later, his pulse came, all the machines came to life, his pulse came back. I mean, and we were witnessing an incredible miracle, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it wasn't over with yet. And that's when I'd gotten the call like, hey, they're transferring him down to Cardinal Glennon. He's brain dead. The doctors say a 1% chance that he will make it. Okay, now this was this was a specialist and right. he said, okay, yes, now we have a pulse. You, that this was, amazing yeah. thing has happened. This, this right. miracle has happened. But 1% uh, chance that he'll even make, make it, it overnight. through the night. Not not live, not right. not recover, right. not be normal, but even make it through the night. All of his organs were in catastrophic fail failure. They said they were actually mm -hmm. preparing to do an organ transplant because they did not believe that he was going to make it. Um, and so, and nobody has. If you look through the records, yeah. nobody makes it after, I mean, they say after two minutes, you're yeah. in deep trouble. Yeah. And so we took a group of pastors in the room and we began to pray. We prayed over him. We prayed that God would restore his, his lungs, give him new breath, like God as he breathed the breath of Adam, you know, they, that breath of God that he breathes mm -hmm. in. And at that moment, I turned around in the room, there were two angels floor to ceiling. What? And I mean, just <laughs> powerful moments where God showed up. I'd seen him in a room before, four yeah. years earlier. I talk about that in my book. But as I turn back, John overbreathed the respirator and his eyes open. You know, so the thing is... But they tried to explain that away. Oh, right? yeah, they yeah. said this is typical. This oh, is typical. Oh, yeah, that you know? just happened. But there's a, an incredible lesson that we were reminded of that God will do one miracle, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily done, and you can't give up. Mm -hmm. You can't give up. Mm -hmm. You have to keep moving forward. Like mm -hmm. the miracle of John waking up was incredible, mm -hmm. but it wasn't done yet. The heart starting back beating. Up. Right. Uh, 
that's an incredible miracle. When it had miracle. been stopped for an hour. For an hour. Yes. You know, and I think that's something that we learned is we give up too soon. You cannot mm. give up. And so we walked into that room. We prayed that he overbreathed the respirator. Then we prayed God would restore his brain because I believe God is still the creator. Yes. The creator that created yes. the heavens and earth yes. is still creating today. Yes. And literally over his side, I saw a million colors like God just like knit his brain back together. And so you're, you're saying that was literal. When you were praying, yes, uh, God it. restore his brain with your physical eyes, you could see all In these the colors swirling yes. around his over bed, his head. Over his head. Yes. Wow. And yeah. it's interesting because Joyce's mom had prayed for somebody three years earlier that had throat cancer. And she was praying over him in the choir, the church choir. And literally she saw the same thing, millions of colors over his head. And he was healed the next week. Yeah. And so God was just putting this together. And like I said, there's no equation. Like we didn't sit yeah. and say, but yeah. he, he woke up. I looked in his eyes mm -hmm. and I knew there was life at that moment. I walked out to Joyce and we agreed. We said, John will walk out of this hospital. We don't know Ooh. how. We don't know when, but he will walk out of this hospital. And so we were there till the next morning. And of course, he was still in a coma. The doctors right. walk in and say, there's no hope. And I'm like, no, you don't understand what we saw last night. Mm -hmm. Like, we know. You sometimes have mm -hmm. to go by not what you hear and what you see, but what you know. Yes. and what God t tells you. And the doctor reports, the realization that the doctors don't know everything. Yeah. They don't yeah. have the final word God does. And I love doctors, so that's yes. not a negative, yes. but I'm just saying yes. there, that's, there's a reason they call it practicing medicine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that term. <laughs> right, because they're practicing. They have no exactly. idea. And so um, <laughs> at that moment, I had gone home and I went back. It was like 9 a.m. the next morning. I walk mm -hmm. into John's room and never met, this is really the first time we'd been introduced, and walk into his room and walk up to his bed and I said, it's Pastor Jason, and tears started rolling down his wow. eyes. Now, granted, we had just been told that he was still brain dead, you know, all of that, that didn't matter anything of what we'd seen the night before. Mm. And I walked up to his bedside and I said, John, do you want me to stay with you? Because, and he shook his head and he, and he like, you could just tell, and I knew there was life. And at that moment I felt God speak to me and say, yes. there are times I call a pastor to leave the 99 for the one. And that's what I'm asking you to do. And so I was posted there for the rest yes. of the journey. Yes. Um, and basically he woke so up. So your church was over here, yep. all your congregation. Yep, they church were, of 800. He had people taking care of them. Yes. And you were at the bedside focused. of this young boy. Right. Focused yep. and, uh, and just being there because that's where God had placed you. That's where you. God had placed me. Ooh. And, you know, so three days later he wakes up which I think is interesting, right? Three days. Three days, Woo. Okay. <laughs> Seven days after that, he's taken off the ventilator and he leaves and leaves the hospital, walks home, completely healed 16 days after that. Wow. So total of <laughs> 16 days in the hospital <laughs> and he walks out. That's amazing, that's and it amazing. it was an incredible journey. I mean, incredible. that wasn't, incredible. you know, that, that day when he shook his head and tears rolled down his eyes, I mean, that wasn't the end of the journey. I mean, no. throughout the no. process, there was, I mean, God taught us so much. But literally it wasn't, but just a couple of months later until he was completely cleared. 40 days later. Yeah, oh, <laughs> 40 days, completely cleared from right. all of his doctors, completely whole, yep. clean bill of health, just, just amazing. Well, when we come back, we're gonna talk to Jason about some of the principles, specific principles that he teaches us so that we know how to position ourselves for a miracle. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Something More. I'm here with Pastor Jason Noble. And Jason, I said right before we went to break, we're going to talk about some of the principles that you teach on how to position ourselves for a miracle, yes. how, to, how to, to, to position ourselves and receive miracles in our own lives. So what does that even mean? So I went through a study that I looked through all of the New Testament miracles and I said, okay, so what did people do? Because I know a miracle is not an equation. It's not A plus B mm -hmm. equals C. Mm -hmm. um, it's usually A, you know, plus D plus, yeah, I mean, like God just works on all kinds of different ways yeah. and not one miracle yeah. is ever done the same because I think we would get into this position where we trust the mir miracle more than we trust God. Mm. And so with that, what I did see though, is that every miracle Jesus did, he used a human component. There was a human component who was willing to position themselves and say, God, use me. I want to be that conduit. And so mm -hmm. every time Jesus healed in the Bible, whether it was him physically or it was somebody else, or there was a miracle, there's always a human component. Yeah. So God chooses yeah. to partner with us. And I think in these moments, there are things that we can do. And I liken it like this, like if you're out, you, you can't focus on the outcome necessarily. Mm -hmm. You're not saying, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to position myself if God, you only do it the way I want you to do it. Right. 
you know, or if right. God, I'm going to pray and the only answer for my sick relative is not to die, but to live. And then yeah. they die and we give up, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, so that's a huge question to have to deal with, but exactly. it's not the outcome, but it's saying, okay, God, like no matter what the outcome is, mm -hmm. I'm going to position myself. Mm -hmm. So taking a sports analogy, it's like playing left field and being ready to catch the ball. Yes. You never yes. know when it's going to come, but when it does come, you're ready to catch it. Oh, and that's what you said Joyce was doing, Joyce Smith, yes. before the, before she even knew she need, was going to have to, yep. she was preparing herself. She was already studying, and the, the name of the study that she was doing Believe in believe, God. Believe in yes. God. Yes. And so really the process started in my office. I'd been there pastor for a month, and she shows up in a heap in my office. I mean, like, just breaking apart. And I go, Joyce, what's going on? I mean, like, what's going on? And I'd never met her before. This mm -hmm. was the very first mm -hmm. time. And she had this conversation with me that she goes, I just can't control my husband. I can't make my son do what I want him to do. I can't, you know, all this stuff. And I just looked at her and I said, Joyce, like, you're not in control. Like, you need to let God control. Mm -hmm. you, like, you, I've got to give it to God. And it was just this moment of weight lifting off her shoulders. I mean, mm -hmm. and in that discussion, I was very frank with her. I was, I mean, I told her, right. I said, this is what I feel like God's telling me for you. And she made a left turn at that point. Yeah. Like, she just said, okay, like, I'm giving it all to God. Like, I'm going to mm -hmm. trust Him. And so when January came, you know, she had done that study and yeah. we had that meeting. Control wasn't an issue in her life yeah. anymore. And in that perspective, I think if, if she had not prepared ahead of time, mm -hmm. I think we'd be telling a different story. So that's that that's a good example for all of us. Right. You know, at some point or another in our lives, uh, now down the road, or maybe even for someone else, right. you are going to need to make a split s second decision. Yes. And that's what Joyce did. And what's in you is yes. what's going to come out at that moment. Yes. And so yes. what I tell people all the time is I go, you have to build your house and build your foundation before the storm. Yes. The Bible tells us that. What are you building your foundation on? Mm -hmm. If you try to build it in the middle of the storm, which a lot of believers do, a lot of mm -hmm. people do, that means emergency prayer, uh, like, okay, I'm going to get serious with God at this moment yeah. because I haven't yeah. been, you know, like those kind of things. When a storm comes, you're not ready for it. Yeah. And how it played out in Joyce's life is she walked up to her cold, dead, 14-year-old son laying on a bed. Mm. She grabbed his feet and she said, she didn't say, okay, I'm just going to accept this. She said, Holy Spirit, bring my son back to life. And the, the people in the hospital said it was so loud that you yeah. could hear it down the hallways. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. and so what you do in those moments is not really, it's what you've done ahead of time to prepare mm -hmm. that will dictate how you respond to those moments. It needs to be in there so that it, it can come out there. just like that. Let's yep. talk about a couple more of them. Sure. Uh, sometimes in order to position ourselves, we have to ignore some things. You do. You, ha yeah. you have to ignore those voices. You have to ignore what the enemy is trying to say mm -hmm. to you. We know the battle's in the mind mm -hmm. and he can speak words mm -hmm. to us. So that scripture of taking every thought captive, we really have to do that. Yeah. You know, it's like, and I, and I tell people in a very practical way, like you can't even let one sl one thought slip by because it'll take you down, you know? I mean, and how you think, your thinking and what's in your heart is going to be how you operate. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I think it's so important. You have to ignore, you have to ignore other voices. Right. You've got friends in your life right. who are not encouragers. Reports. Reports, Reports. of the doctor. Yes. You know, I mean, yeah. and doctors saying, well, hey, you know, I mean, every, re every statistic says your son's not going to live. Mm. Okay, but that's not God's yeah. statistic, yeah. you know, so you have to ignore some of the, those voices yes. and it's very hard to do. Yes. It's easy for us to sit here and talk about it, but it's so hard to do. Sure. And, and lots of people face impossible situations yes. all the time. And, and you teach us that, that we have to live desperate, we cry do. out. Boy, yep. that mom went into that emergency room where her son lay there dead and buddy, she did some crying she out, did. didn't and she? The question yeah. is, what are you desperate for? Yeah. Like, are you desperate to go, I'm going to go find every doctor who can answer my request? Mm -hmm. Or are you saying, okay, God, I'm desperate for you. You send the right people in. Like, what are you desperate for? Mm -hmm. You know, and I've heard even believers say, well, I've done everything I can do. Now I guess all I have left to do is pray. Like, I mean, pray first. <laughs> like, that's like, what are you desperate for? <laughs> right. You know, and so many people are spending so much time on WebMD and, you know, all this stuff trying to like mm -hmm. run around in a panic mm -hmm. to try to figure things out mm -hmm. when God's mm -hmm. saying, no, be desperate for me and mm -hmm. I'll take care of the rest. Mm -hmm. Here's one that I really like yeah. that you teach. Believe big, pray big. Right. That was a big prayer that she prayed. Yes. Wow. And all throughout that. We prayed yeah. big pray prayers and God showed up. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, and I take a big prayer as hey, you know what, we prayed and now we believe God's going to do it. When we mm -hmm. walk out and declare mm -hmm. that John was walking out of that hospital, why, we knew it. Why do people hesitate Because they're afraid pray. of, what if God doesn't do it? Oh, 
what if God doesn't do it? Like, yeah. what if I look like a fool for believing the God? And you know, that's yes. where you have to say, God, whether no matter what happens, if somebody dies, you know, in, in your life, if you're praying for somebody, mm -hmm. you're praying that they would live and they die, mm -hmm. you have to look at that as God's answer because mm -hmm. that, that means He healed them yes. as they were standing before yes. the throne. Yes. That means that they'll never have to suffer again. Mm -hmm. I mean, death is part of life. So go ahead, believe big yes. and pray big. Yes, I mean, we had a situation <laughs> yes. where a, a man, 32 year old, ha had a melanoma. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we got to the point where at the end of his life, in about nine months, I mean, it was literally, he'd given his life to the Lord. At the end of his life, he, I asked him, I said, are you ready to go home? Mm -hmm. And I said, he said, yes, I am. And so I had to go out to the mom and say, you have to release him. Sure. And she goes, does that mean I stop fighting? No, we fight until the very last minute yes. and whatever God wants to do, yes. he can do it. You know what I love so much about your book, Breakthrough to Your Miracle? You tackle some things that most people try to stay away from. Yes. So I really appreciate that. Like what happens when they die and God doesn't give you what you want. Exactly, exactly. Well, we're gonna be back in just a moment. Lots more with Pastor Jason Noble in just a moment. Welcome back, everyone, to Something More. I'm here with Pastor Jason Noble. And Jason, it, truly, this is one of the most incredible things I have ever heard. Truly. And I, I, do you consider yourself somebody special? No, not at all. <laughs> I, I mean, I am just, I'm not anyone special. Joyce would tell you that, too. I mean, we're just normal. I mean, for both of us, we're just yes, normal people. Yes. Who God oh, decided she'll, to she'll use. she'll tell us that yeah. she's no one special. Right. I thought you meant she's going to tell you that you're well, nobody special. Well, she might special. do that too, but you know, in the movie it shows that we have conflict, <laughs> and we've never had any conflict. Not okay. even a not even a negative word. I always okay. tell people too. I never went into a women's ministry room and tore the schedule off the wall. If you've seen the movie, so a little bit of through, that was creative. Yes. Like, okay. I'm not that crazy. You don't mess with the women. But, but, but you <laughs> learned you learned these yes. things, these principles. Well, because my prayer was, Lord, I see all of this stuff in the Book of Acts, mm -hmm. but I don't see it happening today. There's there's a dis disconnect. So mm -hmm. what is that? Mm -hmm. Because I see people hurting and desperate for breakthrough. And how do we see that happen in our, so in you, our day and age? So you purposefully, intentionally set out to create some tools to teach yes. us to teach us these things. How to, and how to prepare and plan. I, I know everybody wants to hear this story and you've told it many, many times. Right. Since you started sharing this story, in your church alone, how many miracles? There was 150 you? miracles of healing and God just showing up. I mean, we started tracking. I mean, like uh, it was a, people's healed of stage four cancer. Right. I mean, like things, you know, there was a gentleman in the back of the room that had broken his foot that day and literally God put his foot back together. We went back, got an x-ray and it was completely healed. Mm -hmm. And I think it's mm -hmm. because people were willing to believe. Yes. Yes. That people will be yes. willing to believe and pray big, and, you know. And the other thing, when you're around believers, you talk to people who, man, I just kept praying and I'm praying and I haven't seemed to get an answer yet. Yeah. And I say, don't give up. Yeah. If you prayed a hundred times, give it a hundred, pray a hundred and one. Do it again. Do, Do it, it again. again. Yeah. Because Do it again. I like you that. might be right on the edge of yeah. a breakthrough. I like that. And God's saying, like, hey, keep praying, keep believing. I'm working. You never right. know what God's doing behind the scenes. Exactly. That and we can't see. I want to back up just a little bit. We were talking about some of the principles that you yes. teach so that we'll know how to position ourselves to receive miracles. Right. And one of them that we didn't get to in the last segment that uh, one of one of my all time favorites, you teach us to speak life. That's I think what it's you guys did. The number one important perspective. The mm -hmm. Bible tells us the power of life and death is in the tongue. And we live in a world today where words are thrown out. Like, you know, we don't have that perspective. We just mm -hmm. say whatever we want, it just comes out. You know, I've heard people say, well, I'm just a realist and I just have to say how, and I go, like, yeah. you're a realist and you're actually making these things happen because you're speaking them into existence. I mean, if you look at Genesis, what, yeah. how did God create the heavens and the earth? He spoke it. He spoke it. And so it's hardwired into mm -hmm. who we are, that yeah. there's power yeah. in our words. And, and when we partner our words with what God's word says. Exactly. And that's what the power. I hear that. I've heard that all my life about speaking life. Mm -hmm. And I go, so what does that really mean? Because I'm a practical guy. I'm like, let's get it really practical so I can live with it. You yes. know, I don't want to hear just the church words or just the what we yes. are, but how do we actually apply yes. it? Because some people will mistake that as, you know, do I just speak what I want to speak or no, it's taking God's word the principles he's put in his word and speaking them over your situation. Mm -hmm. well, so over your finances, over your, yes. you know, I mean, whatever you're walking through, taking his word and speaking it out over his, over your situation. You know, I said earlier in the program, um, 
people, viewers, church members, um, just all of us everyday people, yep. we face impossible situations sometimes in our lives. Will you speak to those folks right now? I will. Man, I want to tell you, if you're facing an impossible situation, God, if God can do it for John, he can do it for you. No matter what you're walking through, I feel like there's people watching that you need healing in your body. You're at the very end of your rope or your finances or you have children that are away from the Lord. You need to be resurrected in your own heart. Uh, you need a resurrection in your life. And we serve a God that still resurrects. Don't give up. Don't give in. Keep moving forward. Don't let the enemy convince you of anything that's not true and, and go after God. Believe big, pray big. And I just want to encourage you. God loves you. He's on your side. And no matter how the outcome comes out, he's with you. Mm -hmm. There's so many supernatural things I feel like that they that they didn't shy away from in the movie. Right. Um, like the one responder that came to to help recover. Yes, John and he gave from his life the to lake. the Lord three months ago. Uh, <laughs> let's tell everybody what we're talking about. This yep. guy, this guy, unbeliever, yes. you know, he wasn't saved. He's in the water trying to find this this little boy and he hears a voice that says, go back. Yep. And so he turns to his uh, the captain or whoever was in charge right. of this this team and says, what, what? Yeah. Well, he, he says, go back. What does he mean? And the other guy's like, I didn't hear anything. That guy heard the voice of the Lord yes. that day telling him to go back and they try and they were telling him, you know what? You you heard the voice of God. He said, No, 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 I don't believe in God. Yes. And you told me that he just got saved. He just got the, saved. The real guy. The real guy in the story. And mm -hmm. what was so important about that moment is John was right on the edge of the ice shelf. So yeah. like if he would have fallen off, like he was right there. And like, so it was a drop off. It was that a drop went off. Deeper. And so mm -hmm. God directed this guy right to John. And there was seconds. I mean, like in that moment, a guy that didn't believe in God, God spoke to him wow. and rocked his world. And he, I mean, like, and that's so much, so many times. I mean, yeah. what, how God works and what he does in our lives is not dependent on us. So, you know, when we talk about positioning ourselves, some people feel like, well, maybe I didn't do it right. There's no right. Mm -mm. There's mm -mm. no right or wrong mm -mm. other than just saying, okay, God, I'm going to follow what your word says. I'm going to trust you and I'm going to do my best. Pastor Jason, thank you for Thanks. being here. God bless you. Thank you all for joining us on Something More. I hope you'll join us next time. Call now and get Jason Noble's powerful book and anointed 13 session teaching on four audio CDs, Breakthrough to Your Miracle. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9656. Pastor Jason Noble witnessed firsthand the resurrection of a local teenage boy. The story was made into a successful motion picture, Breakthrough. This life-changing miracle began Jason's mandate to walk in the supernatural. As I was praying, I was saying, God, why don't we see more miracles? And at that moment, he said, because people are not positioning themselves for a miracle. In Jason Noble's brand new powerful book, Breakthrough to Your Miracle, he reveals how you can position yourself to receive your miracle. Jason Noble explores biblical and present day accounts to stir your faith, shows how God works in believers to invade the natural with the supernatural, identifies how to walk through times of crisis from a biblical perspective until you receive your miracle, provides principles and tools to help you welcome the miraculous into your life. Each chapter includes a breakthrough prayer, position yourself questions, and group discussion questions to align yourself for miracles. God longs to work wonders in your life. This book will help you believe with boldness. You will also receive Jason Noble's anointed 13 teaching sessions on four audio CDs, Breakthrough to Your Miracle. In this powerful teaching series, Jason not only shares how you can receive your own miracle, but also also how you can be a conduit for God to do the miraculous through you. We pray for people to see breakthrough in their families, in health situations, in their finances, really any area of their life that they're facing an impossibility, we pray and we believe for breakthrough. This audio teaching series is also available as a digital download if you order online today at SidRoth.org. Don't miss out on getting Jason Noble's powerful book and anointed 13 session teaching on four audio CDs, Breakthrough to Your Miracle. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9656.
Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9656 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.